Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, leave a five-star review. Go ahead, go do it. You know you want to. Here's a great review from Von Quack. Great show. Love the podcast. Very funny. Great guests. Thank you, Van Quack. See, was that so hard? Um, very excited about my dates coming up. I'm really excited to do stand up in a city near you, the, the little domestic terrorist tour, as I like to call it. Uh, I'll be in Wilmington, Delaware at the House of Laughs, April 23rd and 24th. Then I'm heading to Florida uh, to the Boca Black Box Theater, April 30th. Then the Lake Park Black Box Theater in Palm Beach, um, April. Nope, that's May 1st. And then May 2nd, I'll be at Side Splitters in Tampa. Uh, May 9th, the Bricktown Comedy Club in Oklahoma City. And then May 14th and 15th, the Comedians of the Compound will be at the Big Laugh Comedy Club in Austin, Texas. Uh, and a bunch of other dates. I think I'm going to be possibly in Hilarities and then the Skyline in Appleton, Wisconsin in June. So check out my website, chrissymayer.com for details and dates and tickets. And uh, hit me up on social media if you want me to come to a city that I have not named. No house calls though. I'm not a hooker. <laughs> Quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, Lucy Nicotine. Lucy is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative, finally tobacco alternatives that don't suck. These products were researched and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. I like each and every flavor. I've tried them all. I've even tried, they have a cherry ice lozenge, lozenge ASMR. That's also four milligrams in the cherry ice flavor. Uh, these products are convenient, discreet. They can be enjoyed on flights, at work, on the go, in the gym. If you know somebody who's a smoker and you're sick of their chimney breath, get them some Lucy nicotine gum. A subscription to Lucy is the real deal. It'll come to your door every month so you don't even have to leave your house. It's 2021, time to get rid of your cigarettes, your icky dip, unplug your vape, and just get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. And for all my CMP listeners, go to lucy.co and use promo code CMP to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's L-U-C-Y dot C-O and use promo code CMP at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer that these products contain nicotine derived from tobacco and nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go to Lucy Taco and use promo code CMP. I was trying to think of a funny thing to say about things that are addictive, but you're an adult. You know the deal. You can handle this. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm very excited to have this uh, this guy on the podcast today. He's a comedian. He's a YouTuber. He's pretty infamous. Uh, very excited to have him here today on the pod. It's Count Dankula. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here you did. Doing great, doing great. You look great. You're, you're. I'm. You're. I think the first Scottish person I've had on this podcast. I appreciate you lying to me. Thanks. Thanks very much. You yeah. really are. <laughs> <laughs> no, first of all, it's good. You know, it's uh, it's good. It's good to get some Scottish representation out there. There aren't there aren't very many of us left. So yeah, thank thank you very much for do, doing your part. <laughs> of course. What is the uh, what's the lockdown situation like where you live? Complete, complete lockdown. It's been like that for months, months now. Can't, can't go get your hair cut, as you, as you can see. Uh, can't. Yeah, you can basically just go down to the shops to get like uh, groceries, and that, that's it. Is there uh, like a curfew? Do they say like you have to be in by a certain hour? You aren't allowed to leave the area that you live in unless you have a good enough reason. If you're traveling for work or something, then they'll, they'll let you through. Or if, you, uh, if you're if you just going to visit family, it has to be for an essential reason. So basically, if, your mom, if you're going to visit your mum and dad, but they're not vulnerable, then no, you're not allowed to go. And let's say you're like, I am visiting my mom. She is vulnerable. She needs help or whatever. Like, how do they even, do they go with you to check and make sure? I mean, this sounds... No, I just, I just lie. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just, I just lie to them. Like I, I got stopped by the cops uh, just the other day, uh, but that was for driving me out insurance. But that was a mistake on their system. Don't worry, I've, I'm insured. 
<laughs> they 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 realized they they came back and went, oh yeah, we we fucked up. Sorry, off you go. And I was like, all right, fantastic, thanks. That's, that's what I need is right before the election, another arrest. <laughs> oh man. So how many? Right, because what people don't. And when I found out about the story about you, like, okay, do people call you Mark? It feels weird to call you Count, even though you're like not a vampire. Although you are <laughs> sitting there in the dark. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, uh, the light in this room's too bright. If I if I have this on with my webcam, it looks like I'm God, essentially. <laughs> so that's that's why I tend not to have it on. But yeah, pe people just call me Mar Marcus or Dank. Okay, okay, Mark. When I found out the story about you, I I almost fell out of my chair laughing, and like I just gained immense respect for you. So I don't know if you want to explain uh this the story but in 2016 you you got in some trouble for this video that you did um basically like oh god it's so funny and i want to play part of it i don't know if i'll get a copyright strike if i play a little bit of it oh no it's, it's not on youtube but uh, i would be be very wary about playing it on youtube because yeah. youtube have been known to take it down yeah. I did see. Okay. So, I mean, it is on YouTube. I watched it. Like, it actually was played in 2018. There was a show at um, oh, Comedy like, Unleashed. Comedy Unleashed. And they yeah. played it. And the host was like, I think this is funny. And it's basically like you you taught your girlfriend's pug dog to, <laughs> to like, okay. I want you to explain it because it's so fucking funny. It was a case of she, she just wouldn't shut the fuck up about how cute the dog was she she just loved this dog like see, it's a case to see if the house was burning down she would she would grab the dog and leave me to die right? how long so have I, you been dating at this point uh been dating for probably about a year mm -hmm. I, think, I think about a year at this point and uh she just wouldn't shut the fuck up about the dog and so i ended up just like one day like he used to, he used to give you a paw whenever he wanted a treat and it was when I was about to give him a treat, he lifted his paw and I says, ah, that looks like a little salute. And I sort of had a bit of a light bulb moment. So I managed to train him to, instead of only putting his paw up when you held your hand out, uh, I got him to just put up his paw anyway. And uh, it, was it was like, it was like a little like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a full on salute. Like he, he, mm -hmm. he actually he stretches his arm right out. He tries his hardest. Um, but uh, it only took about five days to train him into it, and uh, I got him to think that the phrase "gas the Jews" means treat. So whenever I say that phrase, he would get really, really excited. And uh, whenever I say "Zikayo," that's when he would lift his paw. And uh, I decided to film it um, because the problem was, even with the training, he he didn't do it every time. So I thought I'm just going to make a compilation video of all the times that he does it, and then show show it to my girlfriend, and uh, just sort of blindside her one day, like, "Oh, look at look at this funny video!" And then I would laugh at her reaction as she was throwing my stuff out the front of the house. <laughs> um, yeah, but before I uploaded it on YouTube, though, I was sort of like, "I am worried that some random person is going to find this video without context of just me shouting gas the Jews at the dog and they're going to have no idea what's going on so I was like I'll just to be safe I'll add a little bit of context at the beginning saying this is why I'm doing this for anyone that stumbled across the video and I uploaded it on my YouTube channel and the only people that were subscribed were I had eight subscribers who were all my friends that I knew in real life and they uh, ended up someone i don't know how they found it or how they discovered it but someone found the video posted it to reddit and then it ended up on the front page of reddit and it went viral uh, but at the time it was going viral i was actually in iceland at a video game convention and i had no idea what was happening back home oh my god yeah it was, it's really yeah. funny it's like and you can probably still find it on youtube it's like if you just google like count dinkula like pug pug video and uh yeah you, you were just saying like yeah i was sick of my uh girlfriend being like so obsessed with this dog so i met saying that he's so cute but i taught him to be one thing that's not cute a nazi and it's so cute all the time like yes the juice is like mm? he's like mm? <laughs> just, like, just like turning around it's so precious and so this ended up getting you in a in a bit of shit you uh, were were you arrested like how did how did things finally like hit the fan Oh, the, the cops, like, uh, this was after, like, while I was in Iceland, all of my friends were making jokes going, like, you know, they're probably going to be waiting for you at the airport when you get back. And I was sort of half laughing and half going, 
shit, will they? Like, but I, I came home, everything was fine. But then I think about four days after I got back, there was a knock at the door, and it was the undercover cops. It was the, it was their it was their special unit, and uh, they Did basically bring dogs with them. No, no, no dogs or anything. They brought a lot of reporters with them because they they illegally tipped off the press. Uh, wow. Th- yeah, so th- it was basically so that when I came out of the house, they could photograph me and they could get the nice perp walk, like pictures for the newspapers. Um, but yeah, they they illegally tipped them off. It was they actually broke the law when they did that, and so I was led out of the house and I was uh, arrested. And because the nature of my crime was a hate crime. Uh, I was held in jail for court, and uh, it was hilarious though because when I was in the cells, um, one of the, one of the guys, someone got brought in next to me. This was a guy that they had about eight cops trying to restrain him, and threw him into the cell next to me. And he's going crazy next door, punching the walls, screaming. And I was just, I, I'm kicking the wall back, telling him to shut the fuck up because I'm trying to sleep and all that. And I was like, I'm. I'm going to fight this guy tomorrow. But ended up the next day, I get taken to court. And I said to the guards, what the hell was that all about that maniac that you put in the next cell to me last night? And they went, oh, he he just got arrested for murdering his friend. For murdering his... <laughs> oh, murdering. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> he murdered, like, he murdered I'm his here friend. for a joke. I'm here literally for a joke. Yeah, it says here that, like, it was... Um, I'm looking at, I was looking at this article. It was Section 127 of the Communications Act. 2003, yeah, which makes posting, it an offense. A, yeah, gross, grossly offensive message on a social media platform, and basically, what, 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 what is grossly offensive? It depends who you ask. It literally does depend who you ask, but that's a law. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable because, like, you watch this video; it's hilarious. Like, it, if you don't laugh, you'll be like, "All right, it's not my cup." Gross. By no stretch it was it grossly offensive. It's like, and this dog, you know what I mean? Like. The dog kept turning around. You know what I mean? Like the you know, <laughs> maybe so, someone should question Buddha there. You know, <laughs> I was, he still does it. He still <laughs> does it. You, you can train a dog. You can't untrain a dog. And I've had it where like people in the street meet him, and if they're eating something, they're like, "Oh, can I pet the dog?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And they'll, they'll want to like give the dog a chip or something, and then he just lifts his paw, and people go, "Oh, are, are you are you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you are you giving me a paw? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what he's doing. Yeah, it's yeah. a paw. It's a paw. Don't, don't, <laughs> he's don't, not don't, trying to organize anybody. <laughs> don't, don't think about it too much. <laughs> so, like, what this is? It's just so wild to me that you that you were actually reprimanded for this, but it ended up kind of blowing up. A lot of people kind of came to your defense. Um, I read that like Ricky Ricky Gervais kind of like had your back. A few other people. Yeah. Did this? Do you feel like it ultimately was a good thing? I mean, like I think you were fined for what, like a thousand dollars or something, or like oh, eight hundred pounds, which is about a thousand dollars. But like, I refused to pay it. I even said, like, right before the judge handed down the sentence, I got my lawyer to read out a statement that basically said, uh, if I was given a fine, I wouldn't pay it. If I was given community service, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I couldn't say if I'm given jail time, I will refuse. You can't exactly refuse that. Well, depends how strong you are. Dep- depends how many officers are there to take you away. But uh, basically, I says, uh, whatever you give me, I'm not doing it. The judge sort of like thought to himself for a few seconds and went, oh, I'm just going to give him a fine. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not paying it. I was getting letters in saying, pay the fine or we're going to arrest you. Pay the fine or we're going to arrest you. I was just putting the letters straight in the trash. And then... Uh, oh, wow. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't care. I was I, at that point. I was just mad. I was like, "You're you're not getting my money. Fuck you! Like you're you're not getting it." And it ended up, uh, it passed the deadline date, and it's a case of right. This is where I get arrested now. And I was like, "It's going to be any day now." But then, like three weeks passed of like absolutely nothing. So I ended up going. I don't want to get arrested at like a really inconvenient time. So I actually mm-hmm. called the cops on myself. And basically went, yeah, I'm at, I'm at home. Come, come and get me. And they were like, well, no, we're not coming to get you. And I'm like, but I've broken the law. I'm telling you where I am. Come and arrest me. And then they says, we're not going to come and get you until your name comes up in the computer. And I was like, I can't even. Wow. So I, I get arrested over a joke. But when I'm literally calling the cops on myself, I couldn't get arrested. 
it's almost like were they it's like oh is this a trap like should we not go but man i guess it's not that important that they're they're not going to rush over there when you tell them where you are i know but it was it ended up uh, they just seized the money out of my bank account without uh, telling uh, me yeah they, 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 which was they're supposed to notify you first if they don't it's illegal but they did they knew that if i knew i would just empty the bank account so instead they just took the money without telling me which really sucks because like that that's enough money that makes the difference between like you being able to pay your rent or not or like a mortgage i mean like that's like significant Oh yeah, yeah, that was that, that was a fair whack of money. No, no, none of my bills got paid. They took they took it the day before my bills all came out of the account. So I had like about like six companies chasing me up, going like that. Where's where's our money? And that's actually how we found out they seized the money because none of the bills came out of the account. Oh. I was furious. How many how many years were you into comedy when this all happened? Well, that that was the thing is it was just. I'd never done live comedy. All of my stuff was just YouTube, it was shit, shit posts. It was basically, it, I wasn't treating it as anything serious. I wasn't like making a serious go of YouTube or anything like that. It was just something I did for fun with me and my friends. Like we just made stupid, silly videos and uploaded them. So basically, it was as far as like the comedy, like comedian side of it went, it was extremely amateur. It was extremely amateur where I was just dicking around. Um, it wasn't until after the Nazi pug thing that I actually started doing live comedy. Everything else before that was on the internet. But even though other videos were presented at the trial showing that I was just making stupid, silly, funny videos, uh, the, the, the the judge just didn't care. He was like, no, nope, it doesn't, doesn't matter. None of that's relevant. And then well, one of the key things about it as well in the trial was the prosecutor argued that context could be ignored we can disregard context. And that was, yeah, and see when he said wow. that, so you see how when you hear like the murmuring of everyone talking under their breath in the back, when he said that, I could hear, I even seen some journalists sort of like, like, what the fuck? What do you mean context doesn't matter? I mean, see if, see if context doesn't matter in a criminal trial, that's Stalinist. Literally yeah. Stalinist. That's what he used to do. Jesus. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's it's good that you kind of like i mean yeah they they eventually took the money from you but you never apologized for it you never you know uh because it's free speech and free speech and i don't know how it got decided that free speech that someone doesn't like is hate speech but there's no you know it's not like you were i mean it's not like you had tied somebody down and were you know having the dog pee on somebody it's not like you gave the dog you know what i mean they're like not training the dog to go murder somebody it's they're literally just words it's free speech it's it's just pretty scary that 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 happened to you but it's good that you it's, didn't it's got even worse here like we've just recently had a law called the hate crime bill where if you even possess for example a meme just a meme or a funny picture just possessing that picture which if shared, could stir up hatred against a protected group of people, you can be sent to jail for up to seven years. What? Just if yeah. you have a meme like in your phone, who yeah, would you you check that? How would you that don't? That's, that's, here, this is the thing that's funny, right? So, see, for example, one of the things that happens as far as like child porn laws go, see if you visit a website that's known for hosting child porn, that's enough for a warrant. If you visit a website that contains this illegal material, the police can get a warrant for you like that. Oh, like Twitter? Because that's yeah. one of those websites. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh, see the amount of people that tag me in that. See, because I've I've done the an anti-pedophilia stuff in the past. Yeah. People yeah. tag me in that stuff going, oh, can you report this? And I'm like, please stop tagging me in this stuff. Because I open it, I look at it, and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, stop tagging me in this I hate it. Just report it to Twitter, report it to the cops. It's, it's like, really horrible. Yeah. yeah, like I uh I got banned for reporting a uh an account like months back, like suspended for reporting an account on Twitter because just like it was so vile. I had like never seen I obviously we're not like, you know, neither you or I are like looking for this stuff, but people like same thing. They were tagging me in it, like, hey you're you know you're somebody who's like outspoken about this stuff, and it's just like it's so horrible to see, but at the same time, I was like 
I, I spent all this time trying to get it taken down. But in the meantime, I get Twitter is so dumb. They, they can't tell a difference from somebody trying to take a thing down versus somebody who's like creating and spreading this filth. So yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, it just reminds me of, I spoke to this comedian, Mike Ward, and he's out in Canada. Oh, Mike. Uh, yeah, was, yeah. But I know, I know about his case. Like, was, geez, what, what is it they're trying to get from him? Is it, is he it was making $30, fun $30, of uh, dollars? this $30, singer, $30, Jeremy or? Gabriel, who was a singer, and he called him like a make-a-wish because he had some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of whatever disease or, or like syndrome or something. And he was ordered to pay him like 35 grand. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, that was that was absolutely, and then Mike, I've I've seen him talking about it, but he's like, "Fuck you, I'm I'm not paying it. I would rather go to jail than pay the fine." And hats off to him, honestly. Like, I've not nothing but respect for that because him, him getting forced to pay that amount of money for a joke like this. Im- imagine being that weak that a joke damages you enough that you feel you deserve thirty five thousand dollars. Like that's ridiculous. Well, that's, that's probably ridiculous. like the lawyers being like, "Well, they want to make money, so how mm. much can we possibly charge here?" Yeah, the, law, the lawyers want to make their money. The Human Rights Tribunal, <laughs> Human Rights, orders the stand-up comic to pay twenty-five k for moral damages and ten k for punitive damages. And this was, yeah, God, this was like twenty sixteen as well. And I think your your video came out of twenty sixteen as well. Yeah. That's, the, the, the thing that's hilarious is an alleged human rights tribunal apparently passed that decision down. A human rights tribunal literally violated Mike Ward's human rights. <laughs> like that's that's what makes it. I mean, it's it's absolutely tragic, but oh god, it's hilarious anyway. But if anything, they've they've handed him golden material. <laughs> yeah. he's, got, he's gotten so much material out of that, and he's he's riding it as long as he can, and he should he should because it's funny. I mean, it's, tra- it's tragic, but it's funny. It's just, it's really, a, it's dangerous because it's like they're actually saying, yeah, that there's a correlation between words or jokes or satire and actual violence, which which there's not. Like, my dad would hit me all the time and sometimes say nothing, you know? Like, it's <laughs> just in silence, so... Well, to see the people that make those arguments like that, where all memes and comedy, like I listen to a lot of like really offensive comics, right? Lots of like old school ones as well. We've got a guy over here called Jerry Sadowitz, and some some of this. There's a reason he never allows anyone to record his shows, and there's a there is a he doesn't see how everyone likes to upload a special. And all that stuff, like get you know, get on Netflix and all that. He doesn't want to do any of that because he doesn't want any type of record existing off his shows, because it's it's just his all his entire show is just one big hate crime, right? <laughs> he's he's just, but he's phenomenal. He's brilliant, right? So I I watch a lot of people like that, and never once have I watched an offensive comedy, like offensive comedian, an offensive show, and at the end of it, I'm thinking to myself, should minorities really be alive? Like no, yeah. nobody nobody walks away with that takeaway. But see the people that are making that argument of, or oh, jokes and satire, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, can lead it down the path of violence. They are using the exact same line of reasoning that the boomers from the nineties used when it came to Marilyn Manson, rap music, video games. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the exact same line of reasoning, but applied to something else. So that's why whenever they say, oh, your jokes do this, your jokes do that, I make the exact same arguments about rap music or violent movies and all that. And that's when they go, uh, well, no, no, that that's different because, and then that's where they stop because they realize what a fucking idiot they're being. Yeah, it's so much easier to uh, to demonize a single person, like a stand-up comic, than it is to, well, uh, that's the thing, oh, singer, well, they had somebody else write these songs, and then what about the record label? And then if it's a movie, it's like, well, how many people wrote and produced that movie? And I think stand-up comedy is just such, you're such an easy target because you're yeah. like, you're vulnerable, but at the same time, like, there's so much power in that. Like, you, you really do hold so much power to, like, change people's minds through laughter and that's the thing is like anybody committing a horrible crime like yeah ask them what stand-up comics they uh they're big fans of they're gonna be like what you know i just feel like mostly violent people are not fans of comedy because if you're listening to comedy it's a release it's like it's a pressure valve it's like you're you know 
you're doing that instead of something damaging. Yeah, it's like we see see when I'm on stage, like I'm I'm not a bastion of accurate information when I'm on stage. I'm saying dumb shit to try and get a response. Like for one of one of the jokes I made that got me in a bit of trouble was I was uh, making fun of a article in a feminist magazine and it was something like 10 questions that every feminist should ask on the first date or as I called it, 10 questions to make sure that there's never a second date. <laughs> right. yeah. But uh, one of the questions was, do you believe black lives matter? And I replied saying, I'm not inclined to believe something without seeing some evidence first. <laughs> right. That, oh my God. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing is, right, I don't actually believe that, right? I don't actually hold it's just that. It's funny, as an though. Yeah, exactly. You say something shocking, everyone gets a shock, and then people laugh about it. That's the point. But, and this is one of the things that infuriates me where, I'm very clear about my politics. I, I talk about it in my videos. I talk about it on Twitter. I talk about what my real opinions are all the time. And those get completely ignored. But then someone will go, well, here's a clip from a show that you did in 2018. And this one clip is what I'm going to base all of my opinions on your politics on. Never mind your years and years of YouTube videos or your Twitter or anything. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? I, would, I wouldn't show my Twitter on it. No, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, a lot of... I, put, I was I just using it to of... be like, oh, your politics, you're a libertarian. Yes. Um... <laughs> advocate, that's all. Just where people can find you and follow you on Twitter. Yeah, it was just, it was just see, when, see, when you brought, see when you brought up my Twitter there, I was like, oh no, what did I post? If I posted something, oh, no. she's, she's going to show that. <laughs> oh no, I'm not, this is not a gotcha gotcha program. This was just like... Um... <laughs> no, it's because it's one, one of the things that I do as well is um, uh, I, I, whenever reporters try and annoy me, I, I reply with pictures of my balls. So I was... Uh, <laughs> So, so I was. I basically went. Oh shit! Have I done that recently? Is she about to show? Is she about to get a, a strike on YouTube? Oh, <laughs> that, but yeah. Um, but like that's that is it. Whenever I'm on stage, I I don't actually mean the stuff I'm saying. I'm saying stuff to get a laugh. I'm very clear about what my politics, my opinions actually are. But people will ignore all of that and just instead focus on this joke that I told years ago. Yeah, I mean, it says comedian in your profile. It's like also like if it if it says comedian anywhere on your Twitter pro profile or if you're on stage with a microphone, like shouldn't those be like common sense indicators to yeah maybe not wholly take seriously what somebody is saying? Yeah, it's like whenever whenever I go to a comedy show and I see someone with a microphone in their hand, like the the words I'm like oh I hope I hope they're funny. I'm 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 here to laugh. I'm here to have a good time. I'm not going. I am going to structure my entire life around everything that comes out of this person's mouth. Like, no, I, I, that's not why I go to comedy shows. I go there to have a good time and to laugh, not to shape who I am as a person. <laughs> like, that's not why. Like, maybe maybe some people do that, but I, not in my experience. Most people just want to have a drink and have a laugh. What is a uh, what is the comedy scene like in Scotland? Are there are there like a good amount of clubs or do you find like you're doing like shows in bars like kind of ambush shows we do our own venues and our own shows purely because a lot of the comedy scene in scotland is overwhelmingly left-wing dominated and not the normal good left-wing like the ones that are like we we won't give a platform to Nazis. Oh, like, like oh, like ones, yeah. oh, you're talking about the New York City and radical left comedy scene as well. Oh uh, uh, yeah, like for example, you know uh, Isaac Butterfield. <laughs> no, I've never. Oh, uh, uh, he was brilliant. He he got in a similar situation to me where he made a Holocaust joke, and he he responded in a way that I wish I did. Basically, reporters were harassing him, going, "You made a joke about the Holocaust. That was terrible. That was horrible. How could you make such a joke?" And he responded saying. If you can't take the heat, get out the oven. Oh God! Right? And, and it was just nuclear, absolutely phenomenal. But he was trying to get a show over here, and like loads of clubs were saying, "We'll never platform him. We won't go near him." There was one uh, quite famous club that was uh, that he never even asked to perform at, and they were like, "Yes, we've rejected Isaac Butterfield," and he was like, "I I never asked to do a show. I never asked to do a show there." But what we do instead is we just we just rent a venue. We just rent a venue. We're honest with the owners right away going, look, this is why people don't like us. This is why we're renting it. And a lot of the time, the owners simply don't care. They just go, thanks for the money. 
Right. But, Ultimately, yeah. like if you're bringing in customers, they kind of yeah. they should yeah. be there. Yeah, we've got a few regular places that we do down in London because we bring so many customers in, and one of the one of the places as well, which is one of the last bastions of like free speech and comedy is comedy unleashed in london and Co comedy unleashed in london is a great venue it is an excellent venue I, like i love going down there even even if i'm not on like i just like going down and catching up with everyone and watching they say uh, comedy unleashed is brilliant and it's a case that anyone could perform there you get people call it like a racist nazi fascist like comedy club like i can't imagine fascist comedy being funny no, um, what would that even look like? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll admit, I've, I've done a few jokes where I've pretended to be one and stuff like that. Like one of one of the ones that I said was, uh, you know, obviously we're going to get rid of minorities and all of the disabled, but not, the, <laughs> but not the mentally disabled. They are our target demographic. Like so, basically, like, but the problem is because you've got some right wing comedians that perform there because it's a safe place for them to a safe space uh, for them to do so uh, people brand the entire event as a right wing event even though the two guys that run it are they're, they're massively left wing but wow. they believe in freedom of speech and obviously you know individual liberties and stuff like that they're the sensible left wing that's that's so interesting right because that is those are classically liberal values it's freedom of speech and uh yeah comedy and that's it's very similar to to here in the U.S. And, and it sounds like there's kind of like factions, like there's woke clubs, and then there's the anti woke comedy venues. Oh, we've we've got uh, there was one. Uh, this was uh, the BBC did a documentary on me and uh, like the whole uh, Nazi pug thing, and there was a comedy club. What a documentary! <laughs> oh yeah, I had a documentary made about me and everything. Yeah, it was it was great fun. Um, but one of the clubs that was featured in it, there was basically like my side of the story and then they had to find counter voices against me. And one of them was the Quantum Leopard Comedy Club in London. And I swear to God, before you go on stage, you have to sign a waiver basically saying no racism, no ageism, no ableism, no this, no that, basically none of these types of things. Mm -hmm. And also, like, and this is the thing I shit you not, the audience all wear badges color-coded badges i think the blue badge means i don't want the comedian to interact with me at all oh, and if, it's, if, they're wear, if they're wearing a green badge that means i am okay i i i consent to be part of audience interaction oh and my then, god <laughs> it's, like, it's like a parody it's like it's like we we made we used to make jokes about stuff like that but this is a club that actually goes and do, does it and it was one of my, one of one of my friends, uh, Joe Joe Jacobs, he's one of the comedians for London. He's a, he's a, he's a Jewish guy and he makes lots of Jewish jokes and everything. He's brilliant. And he was actually performing at Quantum Leopard and he was in the documentary. And see, as the guys saying, "No racism, no ableism, no this, no that," and blah blah. You just see Joe's face in the background just dropping because he's just realised his <laughs> entire no jokes left. his entire set's just been fucked. Seriously, <laughs> so, like, what if you are an old? A uh, person of color who's disabled, and you were planning to make fun of yourself. Well, then yeah. what? Yeah, but I think it's if if you belong to X minority, then you're allowed to make jokes. If you don't belong to it, then you are you're forbidden. You are banned from making jokes about it. And it was just, and th and this was the guy that was like in the documentary saying that I wasn't a comedian and I don't know a thing about comedy and all that stuff. And then it showed you clips of this like club and you even saw one of the comedians on stage try and talk to a member of the audience and go, oh, so sorry, I didn't see your badge. And it's just like, oh, for God's sake. Girl, that's so <laughs> distracting. And it's like, don't go to a fucking comedy club if you don't want to be part of the comedy show. Like, that is what that is what makes a good comedy show. That's what makes it so magical. It's like you're, you're part of an experience that will never happen again that is, like, tailor-made for you. A good comic should be able to weave their material and the crowd in seamlessly, like a beautiful quilt. And uh, I, I'm wondering if you have these type of restaurants where you live. They're called like, I think like Churriscara or something. It's like a Brazilian meat steakhouse or whatever. And they come around with like meat on a stick. You know what I mean? And then like, you have like a little thing. If you flip it up, you, it means you want meat. If you flip it down, it means you don't want any more meat. So that's just what I'm imagining. Like this comedy club, like, like <laughs> I've turned my flap down. Like I don't want 
<laughs> would you would you like to laugh? Do mm -hmm. I have permission to make you laugh? Yeah. Do you give me consent to, yeah. to, to make you giggle? Like it's just, it was just that's the thing. One of the things that's always been like a cornerstone of like the comedy club is if if you are sitting in the front row, you're fair game. You yeah. are fair game. That there's and been times in the front row. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's been times where like the concierge will like lead people go, okay, everyone in this row, everyone in this row, and then they'll go, and then you go in this row, and it was the front row, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm fucked. Especially since I knew the guy that was on stage. <laughs> I was like, ah oh, no, I'm fucked, man. <laughs> but, yeah. But like that's that's part of the humor, that's part of the funny, and it's like, like there's there's been times when I've been in the front row, and there's comedians, usually friends of mine, that will just start roasting the shit out of me, like while I'm sitting there. But that's that's part of it. That's part of it. Like audience interaction can make it a lot, of, a lot. Of, audience interaction obviously is risky, <laughs> like because wow. you know it could could go well, it could you know could go horribly wrong, but it could go absolutely amazing. Um. Uh, like what what ended up happening with uh, you know Lewis Spears? Oh God, no! God, I don't know uh, any people. Uh, this was I. I felt even though this wasn't me that this happened to. See, watching a comedian just have golden material fall right in the lap and mid set, it just made me so happy because he started making jokes about Prince Philip. When just five minutes beforehand, <laughs> Prince Philip had died, and he didn't know uh, yet, or he knew he, he didn't know. He had no <laughs> idea. Like people were shouting in the crowd, going, "He died! He just died!" And he's, <laughs> he, he stopped going. No, he didn't. What? And then and a member of the audience actually handed their phone to him on stage, and he just read the news article out on the stage. That is and so he good. And, and he just and he just spent the rest of the show just ripping on him, and it was just like ah, oh, fantastic. And you it was just it was, as soon as he handed the phone back, he, he just said, "Long overdue." Like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's been yeah. he's looked dead for a long time. Yeah, I, I'm, we've we've had this theory that he actually have you seen that that picture of him getting drove back from the hospital, and he's um, sitting in the passenger seat, yeah. and he just. He looks like the fucking crypt keeper. Yeah. Like, I mean, like there's a theory going, he actually was dead then. They were just pretending he was still alive. For <laughs> like, what reason? Like a weekend and, and Bernie situation. Yeah, exactly. But I, even looking at the picture, I was like, that man looks dead. He looks dead. That's a corpse. Yeah, who knows? Maybe the queen wanted to keep him alive. I don't know. For company. Yeah. I don't know. Probably still there, just propped up with like ropes, like a puppet. Yeah, who knows? Maybe that's what's going on with Joe Biden. That would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Have you performed at this club where there's like the the badge, like talk to me or don't talk to me? Oh no, he the the, the guy that owns it hates me. He hates me, and he would never like. That's the thing is, I wouldn't I wouldn't be allowed to do the majority of my jokes there anyway. But it just doesn't it just doesn't seem like a a fun place to perform at. Like I don't like it being restrictive. Like yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like it to be like people can say whatever the hell they want because the shocking, the shocking stuff is what does it. Like a lot of people don't like offensive comedy, and like that's that's fine. You know, order. I mean, you're obviously only going to order what you want from the menu. But there's, I like the shocking stuff. There was one, one of the jokes at Comedy Unleashed that I heard, and it was fucking nuclear. And it absolutely killed me. Was a. Uh, it was a Muslim woman, and she was doing a she was doing a short set, but she said she was talking about being horny all the time, which for a Muslim woman that's quite a already thing to talk about. Yeah. And because Muslims fast during Ramadan, she says, "I'm actually so horny that I actually uh, asked my imam if I'm allowed to swallow during Ramadan." Oh my god! And it was just I was. I was just bent over in my chair. Just I, <laughs> I, I couldn't cope with that joke. See, just the shock of Jesus Christ, what a fucking thing. It's, if anybody else said that, they'd get arrested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get away. Yeah. And that's what's great about comedy is like she can get away with stuff other people can't. Or like that joke coming from her is going to have way more bang than somebody else. It was a great joke. It was phenomenal. But I, I, I like that. I like it when people just say, Sometimes people just say like absolutely horrendous stuff, but you're not supposed to agree with it. Like the whole point is like usually the punchline of the joke is this is a horrible thing to say. Like that, but that's why people laugh and everything. Like, even if you're just sort of, you know, LARPing as the racist uncle at the dinner table, you know, type thing, like 
the whole point of it is just laughs. It's just about humour. But then you're getting people that are saying that apparently this is this is one conspiracy theory that really bothers me. Where people are trying to say that fascists are pretending to be classical liberals and are using comedy as a secret way to subvert and influence people. You know, like you know, like the hypno toad from Futurama. <laughs> yeah, that's like, too much that's credit. credit. Like that sounds like a lot of planning. Like if we had the capacity to do that, we'd probably have like more lucrative jobs or something. You know? Yeah. Apparently, like, some twenty-year-old internet edge lords have managed to come up with some Machiavellian MK Ultra plan yeah, to like yeah. take over <laughs> so the world. Just a brilliant plan to get fascism into the mainstream. It's gross. Like we have. We have that in New York City too. We have like a couple of douchebags. Uh, their names, uh, it's like Jake, this guy, Jake Flores, this guy, Seth Simons. They're like writing articles about like New York City has an alt right comedy problem and they're just trying to push it so hard. And you look into these people and you're like, you're failed stand up comics. Like it's, it falls apart so quick when you actually see the source. Oh, the, the problem is as well, the journalists actually have no idea what alt right actually even means. They just basically think, Anything that's like right wing on the internet is alt right. Even like the definition that Google gives is completely incorrect. Like alt right is ethno nationalism. It's a case of white countries for white people. Anyone that's not white gets deported and gets kicked out. That's alt right. I mean, the same as you can't say that you're a communist if you don't believe in uh, seizing the means of production. You can't say you're a libertarian if you believe in a almighty powerful government that controls everything right. just the same as you're not alt right if you don't believe in ethno nationalism like that's the whole point of it but they just think oh everything alt right it's all alt right and even even the actual alt right themselves get fucking furious that basically they they call them degenerate liberals degenerate classical liberals and everything we we don't like getting paired up and lumped into the same group <laughs> as these degenerates and everyone but that's and that's the problem. Like, I have people coming up to me and like arguing with me for opinions I don't even hold. Like, I actually did one interview for like German television, who were so they totally bought into the lie that hard that when they were saying, "So why do you believe this? Why do you believe that?" I was like, "I don't, I don't." I was like, "Where did I say that? Show me where I said that." And you saw like the interviewer sort of panicking. As if, uh, 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 and uh, because the problem was all of the other questions were based on me believing these things, right? And it ended up that it never aired. They did, they screwed it. Yeah, yeah they, they asked you, do you thing. believe this thing instead of like, why do you believe it? Jesus. Yeah, uh, like, um, but that's, that's the thing is journalists know that talk about alt right and racists and Nazis and it gets more clicks, but the problem that's is it's a, it's a double edged sword because these are rage clicks, like. If an article tells a lot of lies, then it is going to get a lot of shares and it's going to do the rounds. A lot of people are going to view it and that's going to give you a lot of income from that article. But the problem is you've given the reputation of your outlet a massive knock. So slowly but surely over time you become, you basically completely alienate your viewer base and nobody wants to associate with you. One of the best examples of this is even just today, Huffington Post shut down its UK news desk. Huffington Post U Huffington Post UK is now gone. It's what? gone. It's done. Yeah. Wow. But BuzzFeed, Vice, Huffington Post, all the other places that did this stuff for a long time, they're all going down the shitter. I give, for example, see BuzzFeed, I give them two years. Vice, I give another four years, maybe, if they don't change. Because that's the, if you lie all the time, then people are like nobody wants a news source that is known for lying. Like nobody's going to watch something of you know I can't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. You go to news for the truth, at least. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. But now these places they are now paying the price for lying yeah. all the time. Well, thank God, you know, thank God it's finally the pendulum is kind of. That's nice to hear that it's kind of swinging back there, over by you. Because, yeah, my sense is just by hearing about your lockdowns, I'm like, oh, man, things sound, like, pretty fucking strict. Oh, yeah, no, it's quite bad over here. Like, there's there's other things as well. Like, a lot of our – this is a problem that we have here and in Ireland. We've got sectarianism, which is the whole Catholic versus Protestant 
type thing. I know I've some I've some people in America aren't really aware of the situation, but I don't know if you're aware of uh, the the problems in Ireland. Um, I mean, I know this was a potato thing several years. Uh, no, no, that was that was that was long before this. But, uh, <laughs> but basically, the whole point is Catholics and Protestants don't like each other to the point where they will literally go through ISIS and plant bombs under cars and blow up police stations and like all manners of stuff. It was called the Troubles, right? And it happened in the 80s and then it calmed down a little bit in the 90s and then they signed a peace deal and all this type of stuff and everything was fine, but the old hatreds are still there. And so basically there was a lot of things getting said between Catholics and Protestants. The government was terrified that it was going to, everything was going to kick off again. So they passed a lot of laws banning certain things. For example, uh, words like Fenian, Tag, stuff like that, which is basically for people like me, that's our N-word. Like, uh, uh, yeah, Fenian or Tag, if you call us those names, that's that's basically our N-word. But the funny thing is, is we also have football matches or soccer, as you call it, and that also has a Catholic Protestant division. Rangers are for the Pro Protestants and Celtic are for the Catholics. Wow. And so what happens is whenever those teams fight each other, well, fight each other, well, essentially they do, play each other, uh, the streets of Scotland just light up with Catholics and Protestants beating the shit out of each other. And the cops come out in the full riot gear to try and break it down. Wow. And one of the things that exacerbates that is songs, football songs and football chants. And so basically a bunch of football songs and football chants are illegal. If you sing them in public, wow. you will get arrested. One of the ones that I, I can say, I can sing it because it's about, about me and my people, is uh, why don't you go home? Why don't you go home? The famine is over. Why don't you go home? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then there's, there's, even, there's another one as well called the Billy Boys, and the Billy Boys were basically a Protestant gang from Glasgow who used to kill Catholics. And... Uh, they, their song goes something like, hello, hello, we are the Billy Boys. That's what they used to sing as they were marching towards you to stab you. And they would say, we are we are up to our knees in Fenian blood. Surrender or you'll die. We are the Brighton Derry Billy Boys. Like that, yeah, and that, that was a thing that used to happen over here. And that's where a lot of the speech laws originated from because they were oh, worried right. about tensions between the two communities. But the problem is they have built up on top of those laws to include not just things that could, you know, cause another race war, but things that are just simply offensive. Are you offended? Then that's enough for an arrest. Oh, uh, man. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. And it doesn't even matter about any objective facts or anything, because see, in the Hate Crime Operational Guidance Handbook by the police, they state several times it all comes down to perception you don't even have to say a slur so say for example like say for example that you were gay and i was walking down the street and we accidentally bumped into each other and i turned around to you and said watch where you're fucking going and i walked away from you see if you perceive that i did that because you're a lesbian that's enough for an arrest wow yeah, but all comes just say to lesbian. Be like, look, not until I've had like five drinks am I even thinking about <laughs> But thank you. Um, wow. So right, that that's that's pretty fucked up. It doesn't matter what you say, it's all about perception. It puts way too much hand like way too much power in the hands of uh maybe somebody with an axe to grind. Oh, even 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 in the courts, it's a, it's a complete joke because the 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 one excuse that the government always gives is, oh, don't worry, these laws are fine because the courts have to prove intent. They have to prove your intent behind it. Have you ever seen the process? I've experienced the process of the courts proving intent. Right, this is them literally guessing the thoughts that were in your head. Now, when it came to my case, the cops searched my house, searched my computer, searched all kinds of stuff. Found all manners of weird porn, but nothing illegal. <laughs> but but oh, basically, yeah. <laughs> they they didn't find a copy of Mein Kampf in my bookshelf. They didn't find any links to any. You got it on an audio book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got it on audio book. Yeah, Amazon. Um, but uh, <laughs> they found nothing at all linking me to any far right groups whatsoever. And the prosecution's argument was, we think this is what he was thinking, and the judge went, I agree. That's the process for proving intent. 
who there's no evidence or anything like that that you can give. It's all about who the judge prefers to believe more. It's literally wow. your word against his. It's the thing is like. I know my own thoughts. I'm me. I'm the person having the thoughts. But then I've got some old boomer dickhead prosecutor going, no, 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 I'm telling you what you were thinking. I can read minds. And then the judge was like, yeah, he can read minds. Yeah, guilty. And that's the process for proven intent. So see how that whole, oh, they need to prove intent. It's a joke. It's a complete it's Whatever joke. they want. And I'm sure it makes them look good if they can make someone like you guilty, then it makes them look you know oh right. no the, the 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 word the word around the office is uh, the scottish justice system wished they never bothered arresting me oh yeah Appar apparently the word apparently the words were it's one of the gravest mistakes we've made wow <laughs> yeah because basically they they thought that everyone was going to be on their side because they were arresting and jailing the big bad nazi racist and uh but it ended up, it just turned like almost the entire country against them. Even people that really don't like me were like, yeah, I think the guy's a dickhead. I think he's offensive. I think he's childish. But he should never have been arrested for telling that joke. And it was, it was quite funny because when it came down to it, like literally no one was in the court side. Literally no one, which is why I think I only got an £800 fine. Because the trial was supposed to go, the trial went on for two years and it was supposed to go on for longer. And I think someone higher up just went, just pull the plug, give him an 800 fine, get, get, get him out of here, just get rid of it, and let's just pretend that this never happened. Because since then, I've made so many much worse jokes <laughs> and, they've, and they've not came near me at all. Like one of the things, I've got, I've got a black pug as well, and I taught him to get really happy and excited whenever I say, fuck the police. <laughs> That's great, yeah. And, uh, and he also lifts his paw whenever I say black power. Oh, see, that's cute. All pugs matter. Yeah, all pugs matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was reading in one of the like write-ups about your case, they actually said that it was a hate crime because they were able to prove that your girlfriend did not subscribe to your YouTube, YouTube channel, and that was part of their proof. I'm like, yeah, you can watch any video on YouTube without being subscribed to the channel. Well, that's, that's the thing. I'm See, if she was subscribed to the channel, I wouldn't have uploaded it because then I would risk her seeing the video without me there and I wanted to see her reaction. I mean, what's, what is the point of a prank if you can't see the reaction of the person that you're pranking? Like, that that of ruins course. the whole thing. So see, if she was subscribed, I wouldn't have uploaded it and I would have just shown her it on my computer. But they were like, yeah, she wasn't even subscribed. And see all of that that I just explained there? I explained that to the judge. I explained all of that to the judge. And he's fucking just, old to get it. He just completely ignored it. He completely ignored that information. And that, was, that wasn't that was my lawyer told him that. I told him that when I was up in the stand. And when I was up in the stand, I, I danced complete rings about the prosecutor. I made, I made him yell at me. And I even said to him at one point, like, you're only yelling because you're losing. <laughs> and, that made him, and that made him fucking furious. Oh, he oh was so God. angry. Yeah. Got some, balls. got some balls. What are you smoking there? Are you smoking, uh, C are you a CBD person? No, no, no. This is roll ups. I, I don't smoke regular cigarettes. It's not weed. Don't worry. It's not. It's not weed. I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't get you. Wouldn't if get you're interested cigarette. in CBD, Cushy Dreams has you covered. <laughs> Cushy Dreams has a full lineup of of high quality CBD bud in tin tin cans here and in pre roll joints. Um, if you're looking to get all the benefits of CBD without getting high, Cushy Dreams has you covered. They do tons of testing. Everything can be found on their lab results here for compliance and purity. And if you're interested, oh, this is what I love the most about them. They've got like tons of different, I guess, strains, um, different indica sativa blends. So whatever you want to do with your day, if you want to be a little bit more up, maybe you get energy or hustle, but if you want to have a little smoke before bed so you can relax, maybe you do dream or peace. But yeah, they've got tons of different strains, hustle, relax, peace. Uh, I personally really like the joints because I take a couple pulls. I feel relaxed. I can go about my day, but I'm not like so high that I can't function. So you want to join the men and women that are sick of their vapes and gummies and they want to smoke their CBD, go to cushydreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y dreams.com. Use promo code CMP to get 20% off your order. That was really smooth of me. Wow. Yeah, well done. 
Mo Dan and Trest. That that was the, that was the thing as well when you were doing the nicotine gum earlier. I was sitting with my cigarette in my mouth like, uh, like kind of. I was like, am I on screen? Am I just like ruining this ad by smoking in the background? And then you enhanced <laughs> it. Um, how do you like being a new dad? One of the one of the fans asked asked Dankula how he likes being a new dad. It's this. This is the thing. Is is. It's great when she's sitting there and being all cute and like making little cute noises and I see a little cute face and all that. But then then she shits and then she starts crying or she'll start or she won't fed at like four o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh for fuck's sake, you know, it's like don't worry, she'll she'll grow out of it. But then I've had every parent go, Oh no, I guess worse. Wait till they re- wait till they hit two. <laughs> wait till they hit five. And I'm like, All right, great, oh, no. fantastic. But no, it's it's fine. It's just um, I've lost a lot of sleep, and I'm doing so much stuff right now on top of it. Like I'm running an election. I'm building a building like a recording studio that I'm going to have staff in. Wow. And everything. Yeah. So I'm I'm tired a lot. <laughs> I don't I don't That's sleep a lot, but I'm I'm getting work done. So this was a quarantine baby. This was the Corona baby you had here, or when when was she born? She was born on the seventeenth of March, and. Basically, she was born by yeah St. Paddy's Day. Hey. Yeah, she was born on yeah, and uh, basically, even though my wife had had a C-section because of the lockdown, the the very next day they were like, right, go home. Well, uh, so she's wow. still like full stitches and everything, couldn't really move, and we had to like take her home. But I would prefer her being home than in the hospital anyway. Oh dear, I think she might have disconnected. <laughs> It's okay. I don't know if I'm live or anything, but she said she said that this might happen. This is my show now. I'm Welcome back, to the I'm Countdown back, I'm back. Podcast. Wait, wait, a, I, was, I was I was just a bit hijack your show. I was just saying, welcome to the Countdown Killer Podcast. This is my show now. Take your dick your out, yeah. <laughs> <I'm> no, <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been in tr- trouble for that one before. Enjoy your streak. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, basically we, we get sent straight home like the next day. But I was kind of happy about it because I would prefer prefer them being at home instead of in some shitty hospital. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it used to be back in the day you'd have a baby and you'd be they let you stay a week or two or something. But yeah, those are the old days. How has your wife been? Was your wife anxious to like? Are you feeling like oh god this? This world that we live in right now, I can't believe we're bringing a baby into it. You're just like, fuck it, we're gonna do it. I was just gonna do it anyway, you know. Like hard, hard times create strong people. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like um, the lockdown allegedly is going to end at the end of this year, apparently. Basically, whatever it, we we, wow. we were told June, we were told in Scotland, or oh, by June, every, everything will be over. And whenever the government says they're going to do something. Either they're not going to do it at all, or you add six months to it, and that's the real date. So by the end of the year, hopefully it'll be over. And I'm hoping that, um, right, I mean, she's a baby. She's not making memories. I'm hoping that, you know, all of this will be over by the time that she actually starts making memories and she won't know anything about it, hopefully. Aww. Wes, you guys can't travel at all. Like, you can't go to another country. You can't can't even leave your house unless you're seeing your... Quote, sick mom. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm home. I'm home to come back to the states next year. Next year, I'm home to come back to the states because I was supposed to. Last year, I had loads of live dates. I was meant to be coming back to America this year and everything, and then the virus happened. And I've even still get people going. I'll just come over. Just hop in a plane. We'll pay for it. We'll pay for uh-huh. it. We'll just come over in a plane, and I'm like that. I'm not even allowed to leave my village. <laughs> I never mind getting a plane. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely help you get some shows here too if you want to come to New York. I'd, 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 whenever I'm over in America, I hop around everywhere. So yeah, I'll take you up on that. Where are other than London? Where are like the best spots to do comedy? I guess that that you would consider like that you would travel to. Places like Manchester and Birmingham are actually quite good. Um, I did a few go- gorilla shows when I, I did one in Philadelphia as well, which was actually mm-hmm. a lot of fun. I did I did a pri- a private one in LA and everything, which was quite quite weird. That one because it turns out show? 
it was it was a weird one and it's one of the strangest ones that I've ever done. And I'm being careful how I talk about it because it turns out that there are a lot of big people in Hollywood that are Republican, they are right wing, but they keep it so secret because they don't want to jeopardize their career. So no, they basically God. they basically all meet and drink in private. And I ended up sort of in a room with guys that like worked on Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers movies. And then I've got this guy going like that, okay, get on the stage. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck do you mean get on the stage? I didn't know I was supposed to be doing a fucking gig tonight. And he's like, get on the stage, they want to hear you. And I was like, all right. Wow. Okay. And it was it was weird. Luckily, luckily, luckily I did I did well. Was it at a house? <laughs> No, it was sort of like a venue, sort of. It was. I don't want to say too much because okay, okay. yeah, because one of the guys actually owns this place, and if I say the name of the place, then everyone's going to know who it is. So, okay, yeah. so it was a situation where like you weren't expecting to do stand up, and they were like, "Get up there." Yeah, he told me last minute because I was like, "Why?" Why? And he's like, "Oh, because if I asked you before, you would have got nervous and said no." And I was like, oh, oh, "You motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> they were fans yeah. of yours. Yeah, yeah. Like a few of them had heard of me, but like um I just went up and made jokes about like the Nazi pug thing and then I, I did do a because I knew the crowd, I did sort of go, <laughs> liberals, am I right? <laughs> that, <laughs> that 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 went down the street. <laughs> so yeah, was that was that was weird. liberal crowd. No, no, no. It was like a lot of them were just like Republican, but they were very, you know, guns god in America. <laughs> you know, they were that those types. Yeah, no, but it was it was good. It was fun. Uh, Ellie itself is a shithole, though. Ellie, mm, Ellie, yeah. it was. A, oh I, God, I, Ellie now is trash. Yeah, I, I, I'll admit, like Glasgow has a serious heroin problem, a very serious heroin problem, right? But Glasgow has nothing on Ellie. I mean, whenever whenever our junkies walk past you, the worst you need to worry about is they'll they'll ask you for some money. Whereas in LA, I had people walking past me screaming and communing with demons in their head as they're walking down the street with like with no trousers on, cock out, t-shirt on, still though, funnily enough, while they're walking down the street screaming. And I was just sort of like, this is like I'll admit I'm I'm a Scottish guy, I'm a big guy. I walk through Glasgow. I used to do security in Glasgow. In LA, I was like, I don't feel fucking safe here. I'm seeing like little wow. five foot two girls just walking past all these tents of crazy people just sitting on their iPhones. And I'm like, ah, is it really that normal? Is this really that fucking normal? Yeah. Here? yeah, it is. It's normal in New York too. Like you just get so used to. It. I mean, I, yeah, I've been walking around New York City since I was like 22. So. Yeah, but then until you get attacked, right? Then everything changes or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, where can people find you, follow you, check out um, your shows or dates when it, whenever that will come back? Well, my YouTube channel is Count Dankula, but then I'm also Count Dankula TV on Twitter. Um, I apologize in advance for that. Because I, I post some shit. A lot of people, I've had a lot of big like people follow me, and then they have to unfollow. But they message me afterwards, going, "Look, man, I like you. Don't take offense to it, but you you post some shit that I'm sick of seeing on my timeline." <laughs> really? Who's the most un? Who's the most famous person who like had to unfollow you and be like, "I'm sorry." Well, the most the most famous didn't unfollow me because of that. He unfollowed me because he was getting shit for following me. And uh, so, like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you after okay. the show. No, I'll tell okay. you after the show. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always how it that. goes. It's like people low key love you, but they can't publicly be a fan. Because, man, that that's just like I don't know. I like I like the ones that don't care. Like, see, for example, you know Randy Orton, the wrestler. Yeah. He follows me on Twitter, and people apparently gave him shit for it, and he just told them to fuck off. Good. <laughs> so, Good. So, it's like it doesn't mean it's not a reflection on you. It's like you just. You're following people. You laugh. You know, I follow people I don't like on Twitter. I follow Black Lives Matter. You just follow people to see what they're up to. Yeah, like that's everyone thinks that follows equal endorsement, you know, and but people get shit for it, and that's why they have to unfollow. And it's just yeah, that's why those people I, I don't say their names, you know, just just because I, I don't want them getting shit. Like there's yeah. there's some people who we play video games together on like Thursday nights and all that, but it's one of those whole. 
It's like, you know, where you actually hang out with the nerdy kids outside of school, but in school when everyone's watching, you're like, pretend you don't know them. Yeah. It's and like, that, yes. mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's exactly like that. <laughs> well, Count Dankula, thank you so much for coming on the pod. Everybody follow him. Uh, Count Dankula TV, don't be afraid. And yeah, <laughs> looking forward to seeing you whenever you can come to the US or whenever I can go by you. Nah, nice one. Nice, nice. All right, bye.